Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel today, Midlands Outdoors. We've explored the black country, heading to Baggeridge, another place that I've wanted to film for quite a while, only been there once. And some interesting things where all the old coal mine remains used to be the big hills, the top of scope and the stack as well. So we'll learn you a bit of history about it when we get there. But look at the beautiful sunshine this morning. Look at that just coming right the way up. Just being to Himley all. Really lovely morning. So where we've got to go, there should be a path that takes us right away to Baggeridge. Up a bit of woodland, bit of a walk, and then it should take us all the way there. Hopefully it's going to be remaining nice like this all day. Can't believe the wind isn't as bad as what I thought it would be. But yes, yeah, go and see what it's all about. So here we are, here's the path that goes up to Baggeridge. This is the sign, Baggeridge Country Park. Look at that. Let's go and have a walk down here, let's go and check this out. A very old bridge by the looks of it, with water running through a waterfall. Look how beautiful this is. Look at that. I mean, this is a perfect wildlife watching point. You can just sit here for hours and look right away down there and spot the wildlife. But look at that from there, how the water's coming from under that bridge. Really beautiful sight just to see that. So here we are, Baggeridge Country Park. That sign. I think it's all the way for the gates now then. Straight walk. So I think this is actually the first pool for Baggeridge Country Park where we're coming from. This is known as Ireland Pool. Here we are, there's a map here telling us about it. Look at the map. Shows you a few things. Got a top of scope there. That's where we're headed. And then a few other things. Look how big the park is itself with Himley onto there. You've got Bagpool, min miniature railway. You had the mineral line what run to the coal mine itself onto this corner and that would have run all the way to the South Staffordshire Railway from in my last video on Himley off what I showed you. But it's just a big land. It stretches all the way up to there. That's crazy. So let's go on a journey this way. I think this will take us to the top of skirt. But the first pool, look at the island pool, look at this one. A very clear water look. Beautiful, look, look at the sounds of the wildlife this morning. Isn't that wonderful just to hear? Well, like, it's really so relaxing. bit of wildlife up there, can just see a few uh, tits and robins. That's one thing I love is my wildlife, I just like looking at different kinds of birds, anything really to do with wildlife. There's the sign for it, Island Pool. There is many pools on Baggeridge. He said, I was just looking at that. Danger, health risk, no bathing. <laughs> I don't think you would want to bathe in that to be honest, it's old water. Let's go through this way. So I'm guessing this is going to take us into a nice woodland walk now, through Baggeridge. I think, that, is that a golf course? Yeah, that's a golf course, I think. Looking right right there, so this is the path. Looking there, I just noticed some of these pools overgrown by a lot of reeds for wildlife. And a lot of birds do nest within things like this, so it is really great for a pool to have this kind of stuff. It attracts more bird life towards spring. Especially most of the water birds take advantage of that. Especially the more hens in the coots, they love to nest within things, like hidden away. Because they're very timid birds, they like to nest within things like that. But it's just so much wildlife.
could really spend hours here. It's just beautiful. Every second of those moments of walking through there, I've heard no end of wildlife, different species of birds. I've seen quite a lot just for that one moment. But it's beautiful here because you've got the views up there, a nice dip with this dam flowing all the way down, bringing water into that island pool that was down the bottom. But look at that. One more look up there for you. Some really beautiful features for Baggeridge and that is one of them. So right, here's the next pool. Right, the way here, there's actually another one. I just noticed there's some other things, there's even a board telling us more information. Go and check out that one. But nice little pools there with other trees surrounding in its natural beauty. And seeing this, what is this one here? Running all the way from there, look at that. That is really stunning architecture that is. So these are actually known as crest beds. And basically with crest beds, these beds were built in the 1800s as part of the Earl of Dudley's landscape gardens. They provided a regular supply of fresh watercress for meals at Himley Hall for the Earl and his guests. That is really interesting. The beds are designed to allow a steady flow of fresh, clear, shallow water over a wide area, providing the ideal conditions for growing watercress. The water supply comes from an underground spring. This meant the water temperature remained at the same throughout most of the year, allowing watercress to be grown earlier and later in the year than normal. Watercress no longer grows here in the great quantities, but the beds and surrounding pools are home to a wide variety of wildlife that you may come across. One of the more unusual creatures found here is the white-clawed crayfish. This freshwater relative of a lobster is now extremely rare in Britain. It can grow up to 15 centimetres long and spends most of its time hiding away under some of the rocks and stones. But just imagine for one moment this here. Be careful, all the watercress may be grown here many years ago. Really cool architectural features what I built this is for landscape gardening. But the views from here from the pool are really beautiful seeing all that. And then you've got the pool right the way at the bottom. Really quite cool seeing these. I never even knew these even were here on Baggeridge from the last time I ever come. But you do see quite a lot of different things each time you come to a place like this. You always learn different stuff. But it's quite cool how this has something to do with Himley Hall and it's in Baggeridge. So I think I'm going to take it that way. I think that way, that's the way that goes right away to the top. But one more look at that pool from this corner. Very beautiful. Right, let's go and see where that path goes to. There's so many paths around Baggeridge, it just goes all the way around. I think no matter which one you take, it's always going to lead you right away into the park itself. But I'm going to go and check out the top of Scope first, which is right away at the top of the hill, where you can overlook onto Baggeridge itself. You've got the stack up to there. I think we're going to go and take this way. So it is really cool to see things like this. This is a very, very old brick wall or something. Nothing over there, it's just overgrown. So could it have been many years ago, I meaning this was a colliery? There were several features over here, and that's probably what most of this brick wall was. They had several features to, to the coal mine itself. It well may be to do with colliery. Just notice the off the path, overgrown by the trees, just hiding right away in the corner. And once more, a lot more brick just hidden and overgrown right away on this corner next to the path. This is quite interesting. So it is crazy just to see how much uh, 
land the baggage has got with the woodland i'm still actually walking through it accompanied by another pool just right away at the bottom stretching all the way across i think i do remember this section going back quite a while ago i wasn't filming much of this at the time but i did see some of this so it does seem a bit familiar it's just nice to see how the wooden just is big a lot of wildlife once more just here but we aren't too far now away from the section that i want to try and get to but if you've never been to this place and i'm definitely going to say come and check it out i really do love it more features down there's even like old paths leading down look so you can just see what I'm on about, we've sort of entered coal on ground now by the ground here. Look how steep this is going up. And the land there, look how steep that is up there, I can see much of it. What the trees are on top of is definitely coal, I can see all a lot of like dark charcoal ground. It is like coming from there, opens into a valley and that's like really steep around that corner. Oh, very steep. And that's what Baggeridge is, it's a lot of steep hills. And I think this is going to bend round and go that way. This is actually known as Bob's Bench onto the corner. It's coming right the way up. Here's Bob's Bench. Overlooking the view of that down there. Wow. You can look at the view from here. Overlooking that valley down the bottom. Similar to when I've been to Horn Colliery, how you get the coal deposits. This is coal, guys. Right the way in my hand. That is a uh, coal, very old, it's sort of breaking up slowly. You tell how much coal's in there. A lot of it, that's where the ground's pretty much rich and dark. Looking right the way there, look how steep it goes up, look. So by the looks of it, I think it's actually telling us to go this way for some reason. It's looking which way we're gonna go. There's a track there. Does this way bend round and go to that way? To find out there's just so many paths you can get lost over here hoping this is the way to it so here we are this is the pit mounds going right away to the top so basically this grassy hill was once the spore heap for baggerage colliery photographs for the 1920s show this area as a flat field vast quantities of the rock and spore dug from the mine were dumped here during the life of the colliery before re-landscaping took place, this area was a large grey muddy mess looking like another planet. The grassy slopes and meadows found here now are home to an array of exciting and rare wildlife, marsh orchids and great crested newts. You can just see there is quite a lot, what you can just see onto here at the moment, a lot of trees sort of taking back and you see the, the grass there, what it's on about. But just imagine when the coal mine was even here many years ago, the coal colliery does date back quite a bit. I've seen a few photos online of it. But I'm gonna take this way and go up the steep path to see if we can get to the top of scope. I'm guessing this is where it probably leads to. But it does say something onto there about very tall up views, so you can just see further right away at the back. But there's a stack, there's a stack over there, look what you can just see. I will tell you about that later. I might head over that way. Look how steep up you've got to go to get to right away to the top, but the views up here are really nice. You get some really good views from Baggeridge. Oh, but look how steep this is. Gotta go up a load of steps. Reminds me of the wren's nest when you got the 99 steps. All that coal within there, it's really dark and rich, the coal mounds. I'll tell you what. That was a really killer then, getting up there, that was so steep. But you'll see how steep I've gone right away up in a minute. There's one of these up Clent Hills, a top of scope. That's what I said a while back in one of my videos, my favourite walking routes. I said there's a top of scope in Baggeridge. And right the way in front, there it is. Overlooking the stack in the distance. But just imagine for one moment how much coal they dug out the mine just to create this because imagine this was all flat land at one point not like this look at the views you see right around the distance I can see parts over the back imagine that's Clent in the distance 
the right, here's the top of the toposcope. I was right, it says Frank the Beaches, nine and a half miles, 15 kilometers. That way I can actually see Frank the Beaches. Shame I can't zoom in, it's very visible from here. Clent Hills, I was right, that's actually Clent Hills in the distance over the back over there. Can see it, I can actually see Droit Rich and the big like ride, I think it's like telegraph pole things that stick right the way up. And looking there, the Malvern Hills, right around the distance of the back, like, like I mentioned. Uh, you've got Clay, imagine the Clay Hills. Baggeridge visits the centre, just behind me. Wolverhampton, Sedgy Beacon. Sedgy Beacon right away over there somewhere. I've got to go and check that out. Somebody's told me to go there, Sedgy Beacon. And a few other ones, uh, All Saints Church in Sedgley. Right the way up here in there, that is actually Sedgley right over the top. But while I know you, I can actually sit here for hours just looking at this in Baggeridge. But panning around, look at the views of that. Really amazing just to see the stack right around the distance just lurking over there. But we want to get down there in a bit because I've got some stuff to show you. There is a, a mine cart if we can get to it. Looking up to it. But just a bit of history now for you. It's very windy. It's wind starting to pick up because we're very high up. So right, just a bit of history of the Baggeridge Colliery. The Baggeridge uh, Colliery was an enterprise of the Earl of Dudley, whose ancestors had profited from the mineral extraction in the Black Country area of the West Midlands for several centuries. The site of Baggeridge Colliery, a gent to the Gospel End village and more than a mile west of Sedgley village centre, was significant since it was just outside the geological boundary that delineated the South Staffordshire coalfield. The colliery was served by a branch of the Earl of Dudley's Pensnet Railway, a network of mineral lines that linked many industrial sites in the west of the Black Country. The link was constructed by the GWR in 1907, and that is actually situated over there somewhere in the distance just down in the dip, and it was actually a path what leads all the way around, and that goes all the way to Pensnet, and then all past there to the fence pools. I've done that one before on my channel. The pit was closed on the 2nd of March in 1968, was the last remaining pit in the Black Country, marking the end of the era, stretching some 300 years. Despite this, uh, continued to provide short additional workings and service, 564 Wolverhampton to Sedgley, for a number of years after the pit closure. For the last two years of its existence, it was situated within the boundaries of Seasden as part of a local government reorganisation. It also remained part of Staffordshire after 1974, when Sedgley became part of the new West Midlands County. A bit of history here, so it says Baggeridge Brick, the stack which is right around the distance, just over there, what I was mentioning earlier. It says a bit of information here, just bear me one moment. It says Baggeridge Brick was a main British manufacturer of bricks and was the UK's fourth large manufacturer of bricks. It is now a subsidiary of Wienerberg at AG, former Brickworks in 2007, picture on for you now. Baggeridge Brick Company was founded near Baggeridge Country Park in Staffordshire. It was incorporated on the 7th of April 1944. It first began making bricks in Worcestershire. It's, it was headquartered in Gospel End in South Staffordshire. So that's actually what that is in the distance. So if you wonder what that stack is, it's nothing to do with coal mining. It's actually brickworks. But one more pan around so you can just see the view from here, look. Look at the views from the back. Right the way down there. Nice views in the distance overlooking the back views. And one more time. Our baggery is just right the way down the bottom, just down to there. So right, here we are, this is Bagpool, just round the corner, just coming down these steps. So here we are, look, Bagpool, surrounded by more of these like reeds, look, look at that. Very nice wildlife pool. And this, this is where I've been before and I spotted quite a lot wildlife on that corner I was watching a few robins going back a while ago many people may remember that video it was from another channel what I don't run anymore and I've seen quite a bit of wildlife on that corner but look at the views of the stack from this pool here overlooking there very beautiful there's just so many features over here it's bigger than the other parks that I've been to so just looking down from the pool from this side look the sun shining down and it does tell you here about the birds and the stuff what you can expect to be on to here so they put some like different things on for more hen and there's different things there there's even fish into here to stick up back 
uh, dragonflies and water boatmen. Look at that. Imagine quite a lot of wildlife comes out down here at different times. You can imagine you do see the heavens here. If there's, if there's fish in the pool, then you'll definitely get heavens at a certain time. But that's back pool. Let's go and journey up. I will show you the, the coal mine stuff now, what's up to there. They've got the old mine cart, which is still intact. And a bit of information about back, which kind of wants more, some extras. But just right in front of me is interesting because I have noticed this. I'm guessing this bridge, what's on the corner, would have been used for the coal mine many, many years ago. So I'm guessing it's really old. Let's show the bridge here on the corner. So yeah, this is what you can just see right here. This really, looks really old though. So I'm guessing, was that actually used for the coal mine many years ago, this old bridge, what you walk under. This is interesting. But let's go and walk up to there. This will take us up to the main part now, where the car park is. And there is there that coal mine, uh, the cart. Let's go and take a look at it. So right, this is it, Baggeridge Colliery. It says there, Baggeridge Colliery there, the old photo of Baggeridge Coal Mine and what it would have looked like many, many years ago. Just so there, coal mine, it started here at Baggeridge in 1902 and continued until 1968 at the height of the production. The pit employed over 3,000 people and produced 12,000 tonnes of coal each week. The mine was claimed to be the most productive and modern pit in the world at this time. The seams of the coal were reached by a shaft over 17,000 feet deep and tunnels stretched for miles below the ground. The coal seams below baggage were 30 feet thick, so the pit could still produce much vast amounts of coal and still be profitable in spite of the depth of the seams. Just right the way there, evidence of this industrial heritage can still be seen here at the park. The concrete blocks which held the winding gear now hold the two sculptures of miners. If you look at the concrete areas at the top of the car park, you can see some of the rails for the coal trucks. The toposcope sits on what was once the great grey slags heaps of rock dug from the mine. There you go, that's Baggerish Colliery. Let's go and take a look at the old mine cart which is onto the corner. But this is really old, this is actually the mine cart. And a bit of track, what was once served for the colliery itself. Look at that. That is really cool seeing that. And there's the, the bricks, what the winding wheel would have been on many years ago. Really cool. That's the last bit of Baggerish Colliery that actually remains. One more look. And that. So you can just see the bits down into the corner, what stick up. So right, very interesting. That is actually Baggerage. Um, I don't think I'm going to go all the way to the stack. I'm going to leave that one today. But you can imagine the stack is quite interesting from the side. So right, we're going to head all the way back home now. I've got a big walk back to Himley Hall. But I hope you enjoyed Baggerage. It's been an interesting one. Really enjoyed it. But see you soon, exploring the black country. See, look for more videos that I've got upcoming for you. We'll definitely show you more. Take care and see you soon guys.